I will bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. I will bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. For He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless His holy name. I will bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We magnify Him. We exalt the living God. We exalt the King of Kings. We exalt the Lord of Lords. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. The elders cast their crowns before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. The keeper of our souls. Hallelujah. 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 Worthy is the lamb God almighty who was and is and is to come. The alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. 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 Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. At this time, I would like to welcome you guys on to another Fire It Up episode. We would just like to worship our King of Kings and exalt Him and lift Him up. We have made it to day 14 and it's only by the grace of God that I'm still able to come on here in this fashion and do this. It's only by the strength of the righteous right hand of God that I am upheld. I don't know if you guys have heard it over the last few days, but I've been a bit under the weather and glory be unto the name of Jesus Christ. After last night's episode, I went to bed and I woke up this morning and I feel so much better. I feel like my strength is renewed. I feel recharged. And I think it's a gift of, you know, the Lord's grace. It's an extension of his grace. It's not just to save our souls, but to make us well, to make us whole, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So we thank Jesus for his healing power. We thank Jesus for upholding us. We thank Jesus for making it this far. There are many persons that I've heard of. I've seen many persons posting RIP on their status to their loved ones, their friends, their co-workers. Life is not promised to anyone. So we give God glory for the air in our lungs. We give God glory for the fact that we can use our hands and we acknowledge that there is none like unto him. And we acknowledge that it is his great love, his great pleasure to minister unto our souls. So tonight's topic is the love letter of God. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading different scriptures that exude the love of God. God. Okay, I want you guys to get filled with the love of God. I want you guys to get fired up with the letters from the Bible, which is the word of God, which is the Lord. 
okay and i want you to meditate on it let the scriptures manifest in your life manifest in your spirit manifest in your mindset let the scriptures revive you refresh you renew you recharge you hallelujah we're starting off strong with what is love and for that our first letter of the day comes to us from first corinthians chapter 13 i'll be reading from the king james you can follow in whatever version you're reading from but whenever you hear me say the word charity just know that in the king james it's charity but in another version it is love okay so love equals charity okay let us read Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Amen. Now let's do a deep dive into why should we love. And for that, we're going to head over to 1 John chapter 4. We're going to begin reading from wherever the Holy Spirit leads. And I'm just staring at this book because I am waiting on the Lord to tell me where we going to read now. Okay. Read it from verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? 
and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. This next bit is a letter to those who are hurting and it comes to us from Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Like he's literally going to use his hands that you've been waiting to feel on your face for the longest of years that you've known that there is a God and wipe away the tear from the corner of your eye he's going to put both his hands on your face and he's going to wipe it away and God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Hallelujah. This is for those who are seeking restoration for their bloodline from generational curses joel chapter 2 verse 25 onwards and i will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten the conquer worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and my great army which i sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions." And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Amen. This is for those who are seeking God for opening the fruit of their womb. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, with, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou con confounded for thou shalt not be put to shame for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more for thy maker is thine husband the lord of hosts is his name and thy redeemer the holy one of israel the god of the whole earth shall be called for the Lord hath called thee as a woman, forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. This bit is for those who are in a space where they feel 
as though they are in captivity captivity of circumstances whether it be financial captivity of the mind isaiah 45 verses 1 through 3 thus saith the lord to his anointed to cyrus whose right hand i have holden to subdue nations before him and i will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two-leaved gates and the gates shall not be shut i will go before thee and make the crooked places straight i will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron and i will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that i the lord which call thee by thy name am the god of israel for those who seek provision this bit is for you Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 23. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven how much more will he clothe you O ye of little faith and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink neither be ye of doubtful mind for all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. This portion is for those who are seeking healing. Third John verse 2 Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Jeremiah 30 verse 17 For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. For those of a fearful mind, this bit is for you. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. John 10 verse 28 onwards. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Deuteronomy 33 verse 12 And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Hallelujah! Isn't it beautiful to dwell between the shoulders of the Lord, to dwell in safety, to trust and know that the God that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps like God does not sleep a wink so the enemy is not going to be able to harm us because he tells us his blood covers us he tells us that he watches over us he tells us we're in his hands nobody can pluck us out this has been the letter from the bridegroom I trust that your heart was able to receive it was able to grab it up was able to meditate on it and i pray that the word of god will manifest itself in your life in the name of jesus christ thank you for listening to this letter from the heart of god now you can go cry in a corner and worship your jesus now you can go and praise your god have a blessed night